and here we are back with you and on Gutter Fighting Secrets Tactical Podcast. So as you guys may know, last week you and I sat down, we talked all about IRA and the UK, Northern Ireland, history of what's happened out there with the British Counterterrorism Forces, British Army. Ewan is a very accomplished British soldier, served over in Northern Ireland, amongst other theaters undisclosed. So Ewan, thank you for coming back on. Pleasure to have you here again. Thank you. Nice to see you again, William. Likewise, bro. So you and I were talking off screen about a number of things that I won't kind of bring up here, but the gist of it being that everyone's kind of fighting amongst themselves right now. Everyone's kind of like, Maybe it's the powers that be that want us to all kind of be at each other's throats. But for whatever reason, we all are at each other's throats. Um, So I guess our question to you would be, what do you do about that? I mean, how do you keep your head in a stressful time like this when everything kind of seems like it's meant to beat you down? I have an advantage over just like... We have advantage over the Joe public because we're, I mean, I've been trained for long times of solitude to be left on my own uh, and to deal with these kind of uh, combative uh, times that are going on, yeah? And for, for me, I, when I look at this, these ideologies, and, I, and I'm very... I'm, I'm very cold about this, whether it be from the left or whether it be from the right, I think about them, like I, I think about that plant pot sitting there, you know? They, they mean that little to me. Uh, the, co- the consequence of what they do is, I mean, left and right, communist, fascist, they're both, the two sides of the same coin, yeah? And they have to be thrown in that wishing well, and you wish them to fuck away, <laughs> you know? Yeah. But, and, and that's what you got to do with that coin, yeah? Uh, and people, they, they have to forget. I, I recently read a book with this father and son woman over in America, and it's called Fuck Feelings. They're a pair of psychologists, Yeah. <laughs> It's got like a pink cover on it, but it's not a pink book at all, yeah? <laughs> They're both psychologists, parent and daughter and that, yeah? And it is what it comes down to the gist to. Feelings lie. Uh, the lie for the people who are in power, the lie for us, and the social program that goes along with that, I suggest they switch the televisions off. I suggest they stop buying newspapers. And I suggest to not to go down the rabbit hole on the internet, but get down to look at opposing narratives. Look at the news maybe that will tell you the truth about your country, but won't tell you anything about their country, mm-hmm. like Russia today. Mm-hmm. They're pretty keen to get the truth out there. They're very good, they put out good stuff uh, about every other country, but do you ever hear them talking about themselves fuck no man so it's every it's like it's everything but russia today yeah. that thing is putin's bitch that that thing is very very propagandist we all have our every country has it so we need to just switch all these narratives off we need to switch the tv off right not only that from the social programming from the tv that is the way it puts your brains into beta wave and that makes for stupid and it makes you stop asking questions. Your head stops working and your emotions start going. And you start worshipping this television like a god, yeah? Media. And I don't mean like like Trump's media, fake media, blah, 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 alternative. Truth. I mean all of it. Shove it the fuck out the window, yeah? And it's discussions like this and people that decide to click on. And if they, people out there, the public, they'll call bullshit and they can say bullshit, yeah. And you, you see it in the comments, you know? Yeah. They're not daft. You get your cooks, you get your crazies, but you just have to avoid the emotions and think about it uh, critically 
Oh, and also, do not be afraid for deviance of confirmation. Don't conform just because everybody writes two plus two is uh, three, you know? Right, right. No, you write two plus two is four. You know, there's a psychological test about deviancy of confession, yeah? And they prove that, and it goes back to like the, the tests on why would Nazis be Nazis, killing people, right? In the classroom, they would give them all little sums to do and they'll all be very easy. Everybody who's in, in on it, but one person, the, everybody would write the wrong answer and the person at the end who's not in, it, in on it, they would know the right answer, but they will write down the wrong answer. Because they're yep. afraid to get put a different answer to the other people, you know? And that is, to me, like a com- complete loss of critical thought. And that's a TV, you know? People don't read books. Since 1991, I've went out my way to read three to four books a week. And uh, that, that, that changes your mind as well so much, yeah. Yeah, no, I think any time that you sit down there and you choose what information that you want to program yourself with, that's really going to be making such a difference and more of a difference, like you say, than anything else. I mean, we're all being programmed all the time. You find your path, not the path that they want to put you down, yeah? And, and, And everybody has the right to choose to be who they are, you know, what they want to do in this life, yeah? That's freedom, you know, that's where it is, right? They have to take the consequences that there's not such a safety net there for them. But that's what freedom is. It's a little bit scary. And they have to accept that. That's the dynamics of the universe. Never mind the earth, you know? Yeah. And I mean, you bring up the dynamics of the universe. Kind of, There is a universal law. Part of this universal law, I think, is karma. Um, and the people that are doing this kind of purposefully to other people right like call it whatever you will like the elite i don't like that term really but like you know people know the elite or like the the decision makers the presidents whatever it is karma will take care of that by itself i do believe um i think what really is up to us is try to live as best you can and as pure as you can yeah uh, the, the way and also with Another thing is that people also, there's a time for restraint. And I I have been in a few altercations in London, because London is the place where you see these kind of things happen. And I've come to the rescue of quite a lot of people in London and got in quite a few very vicious fights for defending women and kids and just random guys getting beat up by multiple people, whatever, right? That's just the way I am, yeah? I really believe, I don't believe in a lot of what that Bible says, yeah? But I really, really, really do believe it's when good men do nothing, the evil triumphs, yeah? I really believe that. And people have to grab their balls and go and put themselves in the risk of danger to help the community, whether they know them or not. You know, if they're in the, live in your community and they're your people, whether you know them or not, you've got to get in there and yeah. risk yourself for them, yeah? And whatever you got to do. I couldn't agree more, but, you know, people these days are really, really pussified. And I don't know what it is. I think specifically, to be honest with you, at least over here, it's white people, white males specifically, that have lost their balls completely. What's with this, bro? I think after the gar- the Gorbachev, the, the Reagan Gorbachev education pact, you know, when they lowered all the standards. I so didn't know about that. No. Pass, yeah, they did this thing. They lowered the standards of the exams. Uh, so people could pass, the, the, stand, the, the exams became easier, so they could dumb down the population a little bit. Huh. And yeah, and that kind of thing, uh, it was a kind of melding of two cultures doing this. They did that, if you, you'll find it somewhere on the internet, it's been, was 
30, maybe 30 years since the last time I heard anything about that. It's been a long time, you know. Uh, I don't know if it's been changed since or not. But then around the 80s, education changed. And the conservative type education left. And there was a more, you know, they stopped corporal punishment. Yeah. You know, you couldn't, you couldn't give kids a whack and all that, yeah? Well, I can I mean, um, I'm in two ways about that, you know? Thrashing never did anything for me but make me more defiant. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know what that's going to do, yeah? And, and, and the other people... If they get a thrashing, I think that might fuck them up psychologically, yeah? When they're a child. Yeah. Yeah, you know, there's different people, yeah? Me, it just pissed me off, yeah? Hit me harder, made me more angry. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, things got soft in the... Well, things changed in the 80s. Culture changed, and they were pushing towards a better way because there was... A all this prejudice and racism and these things that we sexism and that we had to come through. We really had it was really unfair, yeah. But then it became toxic. Uh, feminism turned into man hating. Mm -hmm. uh, it lost its original cause. Uh, and I marched on the streets with feminists for a little while, yeah. But I would never do that again. <laughs> no way, because I went toxic. It really did, yeah. Uh, I, I, but now the the way I show that bit of feminism now is like my goddaughters and niece and whatever my family and that. I, I teach them to fight. <laughs> That's my type of feminism. When no man is ever gonna lay a hand on them, and if they do, they're gonna feel it. Yeah. And I'm going to teach them to be a person, not to be a woman, not to be a girl, little girl. I'm going to teach them to be a human being, a biological thinking sovereign entity. That's true female empowerment that's right there, man. That's that's training your daughter or your niece or your loved one to be a warrior, a female warrior, not a social justice warrior, which is a useless freaking thing that everybody hates. I mean... They don't seem. They don't seem to be for much good because they go down crazy rabbit holes, don't they? You know, and they, they have made. With that, I the, there was a time for me when leftist politics was acceptable. Yeah, I could see myself. Well, I, I don't think I really understood politics that much, right? I used to see myself as kind of like, I used to say I was a liberal because I, I thought that meant live and let live. Right. And that's what it used to mean, yeah. you know? But now it's not. It's like come set some kind of neo-fascism now, yeah? <laughs> it's oh, weird it's the way weird. the yeah. tables have turned with, with that because when I was growing up as well, Liberal was a cool thing. It was, it was like, like you say, live, let live, like legalize pot, like whatever, who cares? Not anymore, man. Now yeah. it's the opposite where like liberals are like very fascist and over here, at least yeah. I know conservatives are different over there, but over here, it's more of the freedom party, which like, who would have guessed? And, and uh, look, even your man Biden there, right? Uh, no, I, I I know a lot of you guys like Trump. Personally, can't stand him. He destroyed uh, half of the coast of uh, the east coast of uh, near Aberdeen. There, right? Right. Yeah. So yeah. Pr protected parkland, right? We'll despise him forever for that. Yeah. Uh, he's not allowed back in Scotland. He's not. Allowed, in fact, I don't think if he comes to Britain, he's allowed within five hundred meters within a models college, right? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he loved the ladies. <laughs> but, but 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 Biden, he signed the thing he, against legalizing the cannabis, didn't he? Did he sign something against legalizing weed? He's he's against 
against he was against cannabis and I don't know if he's changed his tune, but back in the day he was, right? Uh, and also, which is the thing that I hate him the most, who he takes lot the lobbyists he takes money from yeah. is the industrial prison complex. Yeah. Like the Southern Democrats, they're still buying and selling slaves, but they're yeah. doing it in the back door now. 100%. In the bloody industrial prison complex. Right. That's yeah. one of the biggest problems I've had with our, our way of doing things over here is the private prisons, man. It's so evil. They'll send you to prison for any little thing. And once you're in the prison system, you're in it. There's no getting out. Yeah. yeah. I remember like a few few cases that came over here over the years that have absolutely outraged British sensibilities, like poor pre poor mothers with kids and they've stolen nappies and cookies and got a life sentence. Yeah. You know, things like that, right? We we, we look at these things and just think, just Wow, and and then then the then the lines start getting blood between your government and your people, and that's when I I I I think around the late nineties, I with the in, the internet and everything, and people actually really seeing what was going on in the states. Yeah. I seen a lot of anti-American feeling over in Europe and. And Britain as well, yeah. Britain too, yeah. Because of all these things, the prisons and what's going on for the black folks. And you even have things like the KKK. I mean, in this country, I know we don't have guns, right? But they would get their heads clubbed to death with bricks, cracking bats, and they would get stabbed to death, right? They wouldn't survive in this country. They just wouldn't. They couldn't. And and for such a strong, strong country, I don't understand how you can have such people like that out there, right? We've had, like, Nazis, the British National Party have won some seats in this country, yeah? We, like, went pot shit crazy. We're like, fuck you, we're taking another election. All of you is get out and vote again. Mm. Just like, no, we're not having this, which because we won't accept. Accept it. It's just like not acceptable, yeah. Uh, like the black shirts in the war, when Oz Mosley's uh, black shirts used to stomp about Seek Highland and that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the boys from the east end of London would just get up there, and the axes were out, the knives were out, the guns were out. They would just do what they had to be done, yeah. They do the same to the communists as well, you know. Because we, we've never wanted that in this country. Neither communism, neither uh, fascism. doesn't belong here, yeah? We've got, we've got our own way. For the guys and girls out there watching, the black shirts wear like a neo-fascist thing in Britain, like organization. Um, they had these black sweaters and stuff. Um, and now you guys also have had a kind of a thing with like skinheads in uh, specifically like... I, I'm a skinhead. Are you I'm a skinhead, skin skinhead though? I'm a, I'm what they call a skin a, a sharp. Yeah, yeah, a skin yeah. Skinhead against racial prejudice. I, my, I mean, I've not had a haircut because the hairdressers are shut. Yeah, right. I really need a haircut, right? But I'm older now. I don't shave all my hair off now, but I keep it in tight in the back and sides, and have a side parting like a dignified skinhead should, you know. Uh, yeah, I wear my I wear brogues, Chelsea brogues now, and sometimes you know I've got nice tartan suits and that, uh, penguin suits, Farah jackets, all of that. Yeah, two tone ska, that kind of thing. Yeah. You know, I still wear my DMs. You know, but skinhead in this country doesn't uh, equate with Nazi. Because uh -huh. the origins of skinhead is this country, and it's all about, look at my belt. Yep, yep, two-tone. As two-tone, as black and white together. Now, it would be a violent scene because uh, people would go to the football, and you would have your best friend beside you and your football support in your football team would be black, he would be Asian, but we would be jumping on the football field 
to go and destroy the other football team with the hooliganism and that, yeah? So uh, there was the boot, they were called like the boot boys. And then the, like, oi polloi and that. And then like the, 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 the Nazi skins and the Nazi punks, they came in after. Yeah. Yeah, they came in after. And you see more of them up in North England, actually. Mm. A lot of them in North England. North England would be like um, Yorkshire, Yorkshire, that type of that place, Leeds. Yeah, Yorkshire, uh, Lancashire. Yeah, okay. I've seen a bunch up around Birmingham on the outskirts of Birmingham when I've that been up sense. traveling around that area. Uh, and I, I was up North London, like maybe Sheffield, Leeds. I can't remember, you know. Some of these, you know, all these, the towns that Mar Margaret Thatcher closed all the mining and the steel and that, uh -huh. yeah? Mm -hmm. Well, in these towns uh, is where they, they started voting in on council elections, the British National Party and things, yeah? Mm -hmm. But we always kicked them out, you know, because there's no time for them. That Nick Griffin and that, you know, uh, just... Bunch of weasels, you know, because I, I I like to see the, the 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 mad militant like death cult commies and those evil Nazi fascists. I like to see them up there on the internet because I can see who they are and where they are. They can say their stuff, right? Yeah. I'm not going to get offended. I'm just going to be like, okay, I know who you are and where you are, yeah? And that's fine for me, you know. Uh, stay away from me. That's good, yeah? And it's good to know about them, right? Uh, when we silence them, they go underground. And then they get really militant. And then you get to the Timothy McVeigh's of this world. Yeah, and that's exactly what's happening right now, at least in the States, right? Because you've got all of these Democrats making it pretty much illegal to think. So, you know, whatever the way you're thinking, if it's not what they think, they're going to censor you. So their biggest fear right now yeah. is white supremacy. Why? I really, I honestly don't know because it's not like white supremacists have done anything in the past decade, at least, right? Before that, you've had um, Ruby Ridge, Waco, 90s, like militia type skinheads. Um, you said the... The World Trade Center, all of that was like in the 90s. But for at least a decade or two, those white Nazi guys haven't done anything. And now it's like it's really focused on our biggest problem is white nationalism. Well, where did that come from? It's really just an attack on all white people. I, I, I see, not that I'm saying I like these guys very much, right? Uh, I, I don't think I like them at all. I thought I liked them in the beginning, but then I discovered a bit more about them, yeah? They have this thing, the alt-right, that came out of America, yeah? No, I, in the beginning, I thought this was some kind of, like, maybe a libertarian thing yeah. that was not concerned with race or... Uh, maybe religion, yes, but all of it. No, I think they were lumping all of the religions in together, yeah? And it was like the, also the, after the, for a few years there, feminism went from being a good thing to a toxic thing. There was a reaction to that. And then there was so many disenfranchised working class boys that had no jobs. They'd come back from Iraq, Afghanistan. These are really strong men that have been through hell, right? Yeah, they're proud because they've been taught to be proud, like the Proud Boys, yeah? Uh, they didn't start out, I don't think they started out like all racist and shit like that, yeah? But eventually the fringe has taken over, you know? Uh, I, I'm, I'm not quite sure about that. So 
the, I think the alt-right tried to be something on the right wing, but to get away from fascism. But then the lefties just went, oh, if you're right wing, that's it. You must be a Nazi. Right. right. You know, they, they can't see it any other way. In fact, if you're... A lot of my friends can't believe that because I hate the commies and that and dislike the socialists, yeah, 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 they think obviously I must be on the right wing. Yeah. I'm very far from the right wing, yeah. All of these ideologies. Yeah, uh, you mentioned that you're a sharp or were a sharp. And for guys and girls at home, I mean, that's an old term that, you know, the younger guys probably don't know anymore, but skinhead against racial prejudice is a sharp. You guys have always been really on the left. You've always leaned left and always fought the Nazis. But we were football hooligans. Right. Also. Right. right. Granted. <laughs> but, well, you had the traditional skinheads who were like, ska, you know, freaking, um, we'll wear our, our, what is it, Sperry's and our shit, but we're not going to really fight anyone. You got the skinheads, the sharps way on the left, who always fought. Oh, no, the no, Nazis. no. We were fighting Nazi skinheads as well. Yeah. The, the sharp skinheads had to fight the Nazi skinheads. Yeah. And that's like why it became so violent at the football. So, and we had to go there and support our black brothers who supported the same soccer team, as you guys call it. But it's football, really. <laughs> well, we'll debate yeah. on that all uh, night, man. Pardon? We can debate on whether it's football or soccer all night. We could. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well played. Yeah, that would be fun. Yeah, and maybe we'll keep that for another time. We'll do a yeah. sports section, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> What's really going on with sports? Yeah, it's cool, though, that you were a uh, sharp, dude. That's that's badass shit. Um, I've always, you know, I've always thought that that was good. It, I like Scott too much to ever be um, – you know, all the way with the with the freaking Nazis. I always found it was it was really fascinating because you've got the the communists, right? And then you've got the Nazis who fight the communists, but national socialism is basically the same thing as communism, only like for the white people. It's the I mean look at fascism in Italy, it was a direct result of the failure of Marxist predictions. That's where it come from. And then they looked at all Marxist predictions and Marxism, and they went, okay, that didn't work, that didn't work, that didn't work, this works. And that's how Italian fascism came into Tingme. Hmm. And then you've got to look at uh, the National Socialist Workers' Party of Germany. Before they were the National Socialist pa Workers' Party of Germany, they were the socialist. Democratic Party or something like that. Right, they were the right. socialists, right? No, they are just communists who want for Germany, right? The yeah. Nazis, yeah? The communists want their shit for the whole world. They're right. internationalists, the enemies of the globalists, yeah? yeah. And, and, and their agenda is to take over the whole fucking world, yeah? communism, yeah. uh, but the national socialism wasn't to take over the whole world, even though it looked like they'll kind of go that way, but they just wanted their Lebensraum for Germans. The communism, they want to do their... And if you look at Marx, uh, Das Kapital, right, that bastard, right, he calls for, like, the revolution, Can you, like, you want 60 million people dead or whatever, right? Then he wants them to go into this communist state. Then he wants them to go into a type of like that Das Kapital part, like kind of what China's doing now, yeah? Let them have their own business, all that. Then let the scum rise to the top of the pond, as he put it, and then kill them all again, right? Have another purge, you know? Kill another few hundred million people, yeah? This is what Marx asked for. And did you hear these people talking about this? And he asked for three purges. Well, one revolution to kill so many hundred million people and another two purges to eventually find their utopia 
uh, communist utopia which they think that will turn into anarchism. Hmm. That's pretty Idiots. fucked up, man. Did, have, they, have they never thought about human nature? Right. Well, you've got all these Idiots. fucking idiots running around on the streets talking about Marxism. A lot of them are in very high political office right now, talking about Marxism, talking about communism, socialism, whatever. It's got to scare the shit out of you to really think about. They know what they're saying. They know they've read this stuff. And, and they know that people are, certain people are listening very carefully to that as well. Yeah. Very carefully to that, yeah. And and they do take that as signals. They do, they, they, they're like, oh, okay, if the politician said that, that's fine. Because they're programmed, social programmed, engineered. Yeah. Well, it's, it's all been programmed. It's all been engineered. I mean, like yeah. we were saying at the beginning, if you watch the news every night, if you freaking watch TV, you know, every night, if you're, you're letting yourself be programmed by all this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, before it was the Bible, then it became the media. Yeah. And now it's like, I mean, the media's there too, but the most insidious thing is the military industrial complex is leached into that. Yeah. You yeah, said, you yeah, see, would, like, even the product placement of the guns. I mean, I'm not against guns, right? I would wish the, I got my guns back so I could hunt. Uh, but uh, I can't. But I have to say, we've got one massacre in one school in Scotland in Dublin. Mm -hmm. The guns off us. We've never had another one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There is so, something I mean, to be we, said in that. We can talk about that. That's that's an interesting thing that you bring up because in China, for example, where again they don't have guns, they haven't had guns for well, really forever. Um, they have school massacres from time to time, and they just use knives. Uh, you know, in countries like certain African nations where it's illegal to privately own a gun, doesn't really stop anybody from buying their guns on the black market, going to the school, and abducting the children. So. You know, it depends. In a situation... Well, that's that's terrorists. No, no. Is that, is that, that not terrorists? No, young boys on Ritalin, yeah. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That's, the, that's yeah. the scary thing, too, is you bring up Ritalin, which is the pharmaceutical complex. And they've been fucking poisoning us for a long time, man. Yeah. The, another, another part of the group that need to get put against the wall, yeah? <laughs> well... Yeah. Yeah, the, the big four and the pharmaceuticals, yeah. Those five, they got, got to go. <laughs> they got to go. But I, 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 and then I, I would like some kind of revolution, but I'd rather be bloodless. And I've thought the only way for it to be bloodless is to let all these energy companies keep the license to produce energy, let them carry on taking the profits, right? But they have to do it with clean energy. And the other oil companies can't be making all that shitty plastics and putting mercury in our sea. I, I'm from the Orkney Islands. I eat a lot of fish. Yeah? It's good for the brain, you know. Uh, and the sea is destroyed. The sea is really important to me, you know. The global warming thing, that comes and goes. You know, I think we'll manage to deal with that, yeah. yeah. But the pollutants, No. And once that's all polluted everywhere, and when the trees are gone, that's it, yeah? The, gl the global warming, warming, we can deal with. I know we can deal with that, yeah. We've dealt with that a bunch of times over the millennia, yeah? So we'll deal with that again with better technology. So... No, I'm in full agreement with you, man. Um, I definitely think that the global warming thing comes and goes in cycles, but pollution's pollution. Um, yeah. I love to recycle, man. I try to recycle every fucking thing I can. I think it's really important that we stop like polluting our earth as much. Like over in the UK and in Europe, here in America, you know, we use scrubbers on our coal plants, all of that. We try the best we can. And I think honestly, we need to try even better. But the problem comes in China, China America, uh, and India. India have exactly. to try them more than everybody. The BRICS nations. Yeah, yeah exactly. And we can't unfortunately, make them do anything, so. No, no, and, but 
I did I hear right that Biden's going to rejoin the Paris Agreement? He already did. To start, I'm, I'm not really happy, but I'm big for the time. environment. I'm big for the environment. I really am, yeah. But well, I'm, not, I'm no like lefty, happy type environmentalist. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, no. It's yeah, a, it's I, I, very... I want to conserve my hunting grounds to live a natural lifestyle. Well, this is something you and that our ancestors knew. You know, you can't kill all of the herd of animal. You need to leave some to replenish. Uh, and yeah. it's been forgotten nowadays, unfortunately. Instead, we have industrial slaughterhouses yeah. where those cows go through there, passing on all sorts of antibiotics and steroids into our, and adrenaline in our system because they die with fear in the heart. Yeah. Not, a, not a good shot straight to the heart. When they're munching away on the grass, free, they don't see you coming, boom, they're dead. They don't know it's coming. It's healthy meat. Yeah. It's healthy meat, you know. They're not, it's not tense. They're not on the run. You know. Yeah, yeah I, no, I, 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 I don't that. like it. Yeah, I don't like it. Yeah. Well, it's like when you eat a hamburger, that's not one cow. That's coming from like 10, 20 different cows all mixed together. It's kind of gross when you think about yeah. it. Do you know when this last time I went to McDonald's? A while ago, I assume. 1997. <laughs> you got me beat. Yeah. It's been maybe 10 years for me, but you still have me beat. <laughs> yeah. And even then, I only managed to get to McDonald's sometimes in my life, right? Because where I come from, we have like the richest uh, vein of uranium mm. that's the closest to the surface in the world. Oh. Gives us a high coincidence of multiple sclerosis in the population, MS. Now, we had to fight against all the big companies wanting our uranium, yeah? And eventually we won the case. When I grew up, my whole life, and it was there like from the 50s probably, yeah? There was a big sign at the north end of my little town, at the end of the bay, and it was like a uh, Green Party and Orkney says no to uranium strip mining. They wanted to strip mine the uranium and the gold and blah, blah, blah from Orkney, yeah? But we got a law passed that they couldn't strip mine the Orkney Islands. The result of that law also means that Burger King, McDonald's, KFC, any of these massive corporations are not allowed in the Orkney Islands. Right on. That's also part of this bylaw. By law. Now, that keeps us self-sustainable. And we have the supermarkets, but they have to buy their electricity and all farm pre pr produce from Orkney. Wow. And their fish. So to get out for big business not mom and pop, to get on Orkney, they have to take a lot to the table. That's really cool, man. That's No homelessness. The best school in uh, Europe for the uh, all that stuff. The lowest crime rate in the UK. Uh, Orkney is kind of like a little paradise, really, yeah? Yeah, that's what I was thinking when you were saying that. Like, it sounds kind of like a little paradise. Does it get warm out there? We have a kind of microclimate. Uh, when this, when it's the, the summer is heavy, uh, it gets it does get warm. Yeah, I mean we get. I mean it's the certain days it'll get hotter than it will where you are because we're so far north. Julie, you can't come in. You can't come in. You can't come in. Uh, when you're we are so f far north, those few days that the sun is closer to us up there in the north. Than it is really in the rest of the world being from the north, but it's not for long, yeah? Huh. Like in the winter, it gets really dark, yeah? Obviously, yeah. High, high suicide rates, like around Scandinavia, Shetland, Orkney, Iceland, because of the darkness. Yeah, a lot of depression yeah. that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They find ways to deal with that. Oh, a lot of the sports gets turned on end. Uh, 
a lot of the like winter sports and that have to be done in the summer. <laughs> all the outdoor sports have to be done in the summer. And then all every other sport, whatever, in the winter time gets taken indoors. But they've got all the facilities, very modern, very rich. Very rich place, yeah. Huh. Lots of money. Yeah. Well, that sounds like a good place, man. Really good place. One day I would like you to take, take you to my secret place. <laughs> like paradise, dude, yeah. Paradise, yeah. Yeah, one day so, I want to get out that way. That sounds cool. I've explored uh, a little bit of the UK, but never never those islands out there. You yeah, have you ever get yourself up there? You know, I mean, you can get a boat from Thurzo at the top of Scotland. It only takes you like an hour to my town, Stromness. And then from there, you can go anywhere to all the little islands. And they've recently found a new place that proves that the oldest stone circles in Europe and all, older than Stonehenge, that they all started in Orkney. They've recently discovered that. Oh. Huh. Yeah. Huh. And we've got oh. the richest Neolithic sites in Europe. So what is More Stonehenge? Real. Was that Pardon? created by the Druze? Stonehenge? Druids, I think that was before the Druids, yeah. Okay. Huh. Yeah, so I think, created yeah. It? Was it freaking aliens and UFOs or? Well, people have been screaming about how did they move it and blah, 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 nonsense, right? They've discovered how they do, did it in Orkney. They managed to get these big stones. They chipped off some big stones from the quarries, right? What they did was they discovered that, you know, kelp? Yeah, kelp, yeah. Kelp? Like yeah, seaweed. Kelp, right? And other seaweeds mixed up, yeah? When they put that on top of wet grass, it only takes a couple of people to pull the stone. Wow. It's huh. like zero friction. Yeah. That's yeah, that's so cool. So what huh? that out. And I've seen it done in my own eyes. So, uh, okay. you know, not such a mystery. Right. Yeah, no, there's always a, like an answer when it comes to stuff like that. Like, and then they talk about the pyramids and stuff. That I'm actually not so convinced that there were no aliens or something there, but there's always something. What I think is right. Our brains have not changed between then and now, right? Right. People in this day and age seem to think, how could they have done this in that time? They didn't have the technology. They didn't have the tools. Bullshit. They had the slaves. They had the numbers. They had the will to destroy thousands of lives to build what they wanted. Yeah. yeah. And I've got my own ideas how they cut some of those stones. I think they did it with water pressure, like huh. a laser. Huh. Yeah, I mean, that makes so sense. I think they did it. It's um, people have always talked about lasers had to do it. Lasers had to do it. But if you had water pressure, you'd get that same smooth effect as you would with a laser. Yes. Huh. And I've thought about the materials that they had and it could have worked. Yeah, it could have worked. Yeah, it's uh, I mean, I've seen the things with my own eyes, man. I've stood on them and it's when you look at it like in person, it doesn't seem like that huge of a deal. Like you say, they had the slaves. They had the manpower. If you really want to do it, and that's all you got to do with your life, like <laughs> you, you could do it. Yeah, if that's all you've got to do, you know, <laughs> if, you're, if your whole religion, like your whole life revolves around the seasons and worrying about the afterlife and how many fucking cows you have, right? right. Uh, uh, <laughs> that's about it. Around the whole world in those days, yeah. They weren't so complicated, but they have to understand that they were just as clever as we are. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, look at what they do out in, like, Dubai right now, right? They build these crazy freaking skyscrapers, um, and they do it basically with slave labor, but they've got the money, they've got the personnel, that they don't care about life, human life, and they build this crazy shit. And um, people yeah. from, like, in the future will be looking back saying, how did they do it? They must have had, they must have had supernatural powers to be able to do that. No, they just had fucking a lot of money, and that's like they didn't care about who died doing it. I, I, there's that meme uh, with that guy Giorgio Sukalis, 
the aliens must have done it, right? And I've watched that program, Ancient Aliens, a couple of times, right? And every time they say, the fact is, the aliens did it. <laughs> <laughs> it just makes me laugh every time. <laughs> Here's yeah, so just because they idea. don't have an answer for that, it <laughs> right. means the aliens did it. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> but okay, so uh, I've seen like um, statues of and molds of people's heads, like when I was in Egypt, and they were these long ass heads. That's one thing that I don't yeah. have an explanation for. It's a little weird. Like, well, I, I, I think I do. Okay. Uh, I, I, the statues are obviously copies of the headdresses, mm -hmm. and the headdresses are obviously copies of a certain time when there was binding, yeah? Right, right. And I think binding came through from copying royal families that inbred. Huh. Yeah. Cheers, Julie. Uh, and uh, in the Nordic cultures, original berserkers, well, even 